Sauce to Mustard Fry. There's 30 minutes left in the Stir Fry Elimination Challenge. As long as the flavors come through, I'm definitely safe, maybe even number one. I only eat two kinds of Chinese food. I eat crispy ginger beef, and I eat spicy Singapore noodles. We need to make rice, and I've never had spicy Singapore rice before, but why not? It has curry in it. It has multiple meats, like shrimp and pork. I think just the flavor alone is going to allow me to stay today. Medic! Cut my finger. Everything I go to do, it's just, it's going in the opposite direction to the way I want it to go. Can I still cook with my other hand? Hi, Kyle. Alvin, how are you today, Chef? I'm good. Are you confident? I'm very confident. Very confident? You're not going home, eh? No, I'm definitely not going home today. Tell me, what are you making? I'm doing a sesame crusted cod. I've got some nice mushrooms done up, bok choy. I don't know how I'm going to eat this with my chopsticks. Good luck. I hope it tastes good. I'll step it up a notch now. Debbie, how are you? I'm fine, Chef Claudia. You seem a little bit flustered. I uh, cut my finger. What are you making? I am making uh, ginger orange beef, or orange pork, excuse me, and... Uh, You're going to saute some glasses in there as well? You probably... Just keep that uh, away from the food. Be. Yes, exactly. Keep your eye on the time. Yes, it's I am. Fine by. Quasi! Yes, sir. What's the flavoring uh, in these uh, rice balls here? Chili oil, a bit of sesame seed oil. Yes. And a tiny little surprise. You're not going to tell me. Well, I hope it's a good surprise. I do not like bad surprise. I know that. Good luck. Thank you. You have five minutes left. Kyle, he's got a lot going on there. But the vegetables are really, really big, so I don't know how the heck are we going to eat it. Well, Lynn, she's doing a sesame beef stir fry. It looked and smelled great when I was there. Oh my gosh, my rice is glue. My veggies, Olympus noodles. One minute! You have one minute left! Yeah. Let's get to it now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We've just challenged you to cook a restaurant-quality stir-fry. Now, it's time to find out who pulled it off and who will be asked to leave the MasterChef Canada kitchen. But before we do, we're going to offer John a huge fourth advantage. John, we're going to give you the opportunity to choose one more home cook to join you in the gallery, saving him or her from elimination. I'm hoping that he's gonna take pity on me. I'm looking at my plate and I have no fears. I'm not looking for a handout. It's not looking good. I need to get pulled out of the trenches. Okay, John, all eyes are on you. Who are you gonna choose? I wanna pick someone that I think I can beat and I know if I don't save them, they're probably going home. I'll choose Jennifer. Thank you. John, I freaking love you right now. Jennifer, you're safe from elimination. The rest of you aren't so lucky. At least one of you will face elimination today. The only thing that'll save you is your dish. So let's start tasting them. Tammy, can you please bring your dish up? The dish is a seafood stir fry with curry, ginger, cilantro, and basil. From my first look at this, I think it looks absolutely spectacular. You've got all the classic ingredients of a Thai inspired stir fry. Hopefully, it tastes as good. Crisp, crunchy, fresh, bright flavors. You should be very proud. Thank you. putting together things like coconut milk, lemongrass, tamarind, ginger. It's very authentic. Thank you. Holy cow. I think I nailed it. Debbie, please come up with your dish. 
is marinated pork tenderloin. I marinated it in orange juice, poison sauce, garlic, and ginger. Debbie, the flavors of Asian cuisine are big, bold. This, we could use more. You need to amp it up. We want flavor. Thank you, Chef. I get the orange flavor. I'm not getting the other Asian flavors. And obviously, plating just didn't come together for you. Thank you, Debbie. Kyle, please bring up your dish. I feel I'm gonna impress the judges with this dish. They did a sesame crusted cod, rice done in a lobster mushroom broth, and bean sprouts, onion. I tell you, Carl, I had served fries all over the world. I tell you, I've never seen like this. Mm. You know, throw away the chopstick for this one. Does that belong to a stir fry? Does this, this size? No, chef. You know, I gotta have a big mouth to put this in. What rice did you use? I used basmati rice. You know what you're doing? I would like to think so, chef. You would like to think so? Think again. Kyle. The inspiration for this came from where? I used some ingredients from the East Coast and, and some Chinese ingredients. Do you think you wandered too far from the original? Well, there's certainly a lot of flavors going on. That's part of the problem. I'm not even sure why the radish is there. Just not well executed. Thank you. I should have kept it simple. I'm trying to think outside the box too much. Andrew, please bring up your dish. I'm incredibly nervous. This is uh, crispy ginger beef on top of spicy Singapore style rice. I used some sesame oil, garlic, ginger. This is my first time having Singapore rice. My pleasure. That's good. Thank you, Chef. And the rice. It's really absorbing all of those wonderful flavors. And it's balanced. Very good. Thank you. Andrew knows flavors. He's good. Michael, please bring up your dish. We have a lettuce wrap filled with duck stir fry. It's definitely uh, an unusual approach to a stir fry. The filling, a little on the dry side. There could be more vegetables on this. That balance is missing. I think, Michael, when you cook, you need to just loosen up a little bit. Take off your jacket, sort of connect with the food, and just let it flow. Lynn, you're up next. This is crispy sesame beef. There's a gnocchi mushrooms, sweet peppers, with fragrant basmati rice. You have a lot of big flavors going on here, which is exactly what I want in a stir fry. Rich, bold, unapologetic flavors. Thank you, chef. You know, we asked for a stir fry. You gave us a stir fry. Vegetable done nicely, rice perfect. This dish is restaurant quality. Thank you, chef. Lynn's proven in the last two challenges that she can really throw down. Quasi, please bring your dish up. It's a vegetarian stir fry. I went with uh, red, yellow, and green peppers. They're kind of my colors. Also, some sticky rice balls. How do you feel about this? I'm pleased. You're pleased. What kind of flavoring did you put in there? 
ginger, some chili, a bit of tamarind paste, some coconut milk. Say one thing. Couldn't taste any of it. Sticky rice balls. Yes, sir. Is this a surprise? There's a bit of lime in there. The surprise is the lime. The taste. The surprise is the taste. The whole entire taste. I'm surprised, but not in a good way. Deborah, can you please bring up your dish? This is an orange chicken stir fry, a lime leaf infused rice, and a chive ginger oil. I have never stir fried or used a wok before. Hmm. All right. Hmm. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Good crunch, clean flavor. I guess the first time is a charm. Thank you. Well, we need to take a moment to discuss. Some, I think, just wandered too far off the path. It's not going to be easy. This is an elimination. Someone is going to be going home. We agree that we've made the right decision. Let's do it. John, Jennifer, David, please go back to your stations. We asked you all to give us a restaurant quality stir fry. Several of you managed to produce outstanding dishes. And one of those dishes, one that left us wanting more, belonged to Lynn. You will be a captain in the first team challenge. I'm shocked. I'm one of the top two. It was a great dish. And there was only one home cook that made a better one. They reinvented a delicious classic. We're talking about Andrew. Woo! I did not expect to be the number one cook today. Congratulations, Andrew. You will also be a team captain in the next challenge. I'm feeling fantastic. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> All right, home cooks, it's time for you to demonstrate another classic French technique. Are you primed to see what it is? Yes, yes chef. chef. You look terrified. Just need to know what it is. This time, your survival depends on... a butter-basted steak, perfectly cooked to medium rare. The French term for this technique is arrosé. We're looking for a beautifully browned crust a tender pink interior with just a hint of red. This is what I'm looking for exactly. You got it? Yes, yes chef. chef. I make butter-basted steak fairly often, so I have a really good shot at making it up to the balcony after this round. The first thing I do is get my pan searing hot. One of the most important aspects of this dish is getting a beautiful sear on the steak. I'm very happy that it's steak and not a French omelet again. <laughs> Two minutes to bring the pan up to high heat, eight minutes to cook, and five minutes to let your steak relax, and you'll be cooking a perfect medium rare. I'm extremely focused, <laughs> just trying to get this done in a timely manner so I have more than enough time to rest my steak. It's very important when you season meat to be liberal, because a lot of that seasoning will be lost to the pan. I have to amp this salt up and butter. I do not want to let the judges down. I'm secretly rooting for Jonathan. He's an amazing, charismatic guy and has a good soul. I really do want this, but I'm also missing my family. My mom taught me how to cook. She was a single mother and raised my brother and I. And I want them to be proud of what I'm gonna put on the plate today. All the seasoning's been wiped off of Jonathan's. Mm. He's wiping all the seasoning off. Just waiting for my oil to smoke. I wanted to rip my hair out. Oh, come on. When the steak goes in, you want to hear it sizzle. If you don't get that sizzle, you are in trouble right out of the gate. 
I love the intensity of the pressure test. I can see the fear in their eyes, and it's kind of exciting to see. I know Marissa is a badass with steaks, so I'm really happy to be up on the balcony because the difference between having a perfect steak and being underdone or overdone is really minute. I've got adrenaline going through my veins. This is it. I want to be up there with my buds. I, I need to be up there. I don't want to wait any longer. I'm pretty confident in Marissa because she's into proteins and the rest are a bit iffy. You want the exterior of that steak to caramelize. Add more butter, baste and baste to keep it moist. Everything they do matters here. The way they season, the way they sear, the way they rest, everything matters. John, that's too much butter. Look at Nadia's pan. It is spewing off lots of big smoke there. That concerns me. She could be burning her herbs. She could be burning the steak. She could yeah. be burning the garlic. One second can ruin my dish. If I do not get the heat right in this pan, I'm done. Five minutes, five minutes left. Make sure you leave enough time to rest your steak. The sear on the outside is perfection. I just want to see a beautiful pink center. I lay my steak down very carefully, and I just wait. Patience is a virtue. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. I'm feeling very unsure. Like, here's unsure, and I'm like, here. I'm only going to find out if I nailed it when the judges slice that bad boy open. Jonathan, what is the color that you're trying to achieve in the center of the steak? The medium rare. You miss some of the caramelization here. You can see that. See how it's gray? Yeah. See that? Let's make the cut and see if you actually made the cut. Boom. Look at that. That's perfect. It's a thing of beauty. Thank you. How's it taste? Hmm. Could use more salt. But overall, really solid performance. Thank you. I'm thrilled. I feel a little bit more confident. Marissa. Chef Michael. You a steak lover? I am a steak lover. I actually heard you have a dog by the name of Porterhouse. Porterhouse is my dog. <laughs> Interesting. Are you pleased with the outcome using this classic French technique? Yes, I am. I achieved a nice sear on all sides of the steak. So let's see how you did on the cook. Very good. I think it could have been pushed just a little bit more with the seasoning. You lose a lot of salt and pepper when you're cooking and basting. But not bad at all. Just wish it was a porterhouse. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Chef. Nadia. Hello, Chef Alvin. Pan was smoking. You cook a lot of steak? I have, but usually I do it on my grill in the middle of a park. Well, how do you think you're done? I'm hoping that it's a beautiful medium rare. How did you know it's a medium rare? I used a small pin. I just put it in and then I just put it That's together. That's right, your most sensitive part of your body, right there. Where did you get that trick from? A wonderful chef. I, I didn't recall telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, very good caramelization. Thank you, chef. So, the moment of truth. Please open it. <laughs> <laughs> you are killing me right now. <laughs> Seems good. So, did you season it? Yeah, definitely. I was liberal with the salt. It's nicely seasoned. You know what I like about you, Nadia? Tell me. You don't do things halfway. 
Thank you, Chef Alvin. I'm feeling pretty happy. There is a very good chance that I'm going up to the gallery now. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Like, my legs feel like they're gonna go, and I have to think with every ounce of my being, don't fall over. I just, I just have to keep going. Hi there, Jen. How are you feeling? I'm nervous, as usual. I like what I'm seeing. Great even caramelization all over. Well, let's see how you did. That looks terrific. Thank you. Nice even color, nice blushing pink with a touch of red in the center. Nicely seasoned. <laughs> well done, Jen. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> as close to a photo finish as I think you're ever going to see when it comes to four steaks. Yeah. I'm thinking, OK, I might have a good chance here. Possibly. I don't want to battle with one other person. It's going to be down to that last grain of salt. That's how close it is. I feel a little bit nervous, but excited at the same time. Nobody knows what to expect. Uh, uh, my stomach's in knots. All right, let's do it. You are four of the top eight home cooks in the country. And you proved it with this challenge. This decision came down to the finest of details. Taking everything into account, two home cooks had the slightest edge. And they are... Nadia. And... Jen. Thank you, Chef. Nicely done. Please head up to the gallery. I might run. I'm so happy. I'm going up to the gallery, and I just made the top seven. Yay! I'm safe. I cooked a perfect steak. <laughs> Your fate comes down to a sweet finale. A delicious creme caramel under a delicate dome of sugar. Thank God I'm not down there. The whole dish has to have an enticing golden color. And your perfectly set caramel needs to have a silky smooth consistency. If it falls apart, so will your dreams. Desserts are not my forte. I'm, I'm really worried. Creme caramel is very similar to creme brulee, and creme brulee is one of my wife's favorite desserts. So I should nail this. Everything you need to make this intricate dessert is at your stations. Marissa and I are gonna go in for one more battle. A little tired, but I gotta stay focused because I wanna win. Are you ready to make the most delectable creme caramel we've ever tasted? Yes, yes chef. chef. Jonathan's a great cook, so I'm up against some stiff competition. But I've been to military boot camp, so full throttle. Come on, Marissa, get your head in there. Your time starts! Now! First thing I gotta do is the base for the creme caramel, which is just melted sugar. Creme caramel is a layer of caramel at the base, custard in the middle, and then you flip it over so the caramel is actually on top. With that 30 minutes, they have to multitask. They need to get the caramel cooking, cook another batch of sugar in order to make their cages, plus your egg custard. So three things simultaneously. Making this creme caramel is an enormous task because you only have 30 minutes, and most of the time, that creme caramel should be in the oven. Come on, guys! Let's go, guys. Let's go. Just stay focused. The caramel that I have at the bottom of my ramekin is perfect. My caramel, it's beautiful, golden brown. I put it in a nice bath. I need that to set. Now, I work on my custard. This is a crucial step. You need to add the hot milk and cream to the egg yolk base very slowly so that you don't overcook those eggs in the bowl. 
Marissa is already adding her scalded milk and cream to her egg yolk base. Marissa is laser focused. I'm noticing though, Jonathan's moving kind of slow. I'm trying to be methodical and careful because I only get one chance at this. Uh, if the crime caramel doesn't set, you lost the battle. Keep going, guys. I see Marissa is actually in the lead. The most crucial element to this dish is the custard. I'm feeling pretty good about the timing. She just put her base in the oven, in that hot water bath. You guys are doing great. Good job, guys. Good job, good job, good job. While the custard's in the oven, I now have 16 minutes to sort out that sugar dome on top. I see Marissa is oiling the underside of a ramekin. That's where she's going to throw her spun sugar in order to create the cage. She is attacking this challenge with military precision. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes. You're halfway. Got to get this creme caramel in the oven and hope that it cooks in time. Marissa had her creme caramel in the oven three minutes before Jonathan. I'm really worried about Jonathan right now. I think I've seen Jonathan toil the inside of his ramekin, not the outside. Oh, Jonathan. He's making a massive mistake. That's going to be so hard to get out. I can tell you, I've never seen that done before. That will not that work. Won't work. They're both on to their sugar for the sponge sugar cage. Jonathan, look down at Marissa's and see what she's doing. Marissa's trying to churn out her cage right now. And she's pulled it off. Jonathan's trying to take his cage from the inside out right now. He's going to have such a hard time getting out of there. It's not like something you can punch out from the bottom and, and remove this. There's no way to get it out. I'm taking a knife and I'm trying to cut along the edges to see if there's a possibility that it's just being held because of some extra sugar on the outside. Uh, but it still doesn't come out. And I think this is the moment of truth he'll realize he's done it the wrong way around. You have five minutes left. Five minutes. He is now doing it the correct way. Looks like Jonathan might pull through this. No, Jonathan. Marissa's taking her flan out of the oven now. I need to give my custard at least two minutes in that blast chiller. So I, Usain bolted behind you. I feel like I'm really running out of time. I wasn't expecting to be this close to the edge. Jonathan. He's got to dig deep, and he's got to start moving. It'll be a miracle if he's able to pull this off. Let's hustle, guys. She's going for it. Two minutes. You have two minutes left. I've done every step. I've got my sugar dome. My elements are there. I just need this custard to be cool. Time, guys, let's go. Come on, guys. Go. Come on, come on, guys. Come on. <gasps> My hands are shaking so much. I run a knife around the ramekin, put a plate over top, close my eyes, and flip it over. It comes out perfect. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. But it's not over yet. One minute! You have one more minute left. Come on, one minute! I'm just going to have to accept my fate. Oh. Oh. It is completely collapsed. I've basically got creme caramel sauce.
Oh, my heart. Congratulations. <sighs> I didn't succeed. I didn't get to where I wanted to be. <sighs> I came here as a savory home cook, but just because something's unfamiliar to me doesn't mean I can't do it. And then Marissa. Chef Michael. You just went for it. Drive, drive, get the job done. And look at it. It's impressive. Yeah, I'm stunned. It glistens, it's crisp, it's amazing. The cook is wonderful on it. It is warm, has a good long flavor to it. It's absolutely delicious. I'm about to cry because I didn't think I could do this. I really, really, really doubted myself on this one. I'm just overwhelmed by wow, what I've just achieved. This is not a success, we know it. Right. I'm not gonna kick you when you're down, but I have to give you props for not giving up. Thank you. That's what being a chef is all about. Looks are deceiving, because this creme caramel is a wonderful depth of flavor. It's creamy, very, very clean finish. You fought a good fight. Thank you. This means a lot to me. I don't ever give up. When things are going tough, you, you gotta just keep going. Ooh. It's another box. Oh, don't just stare at it. Open it up! Oh my god. These boxes are from Chef's Plate the leading meal kit service that delivers to the homes of Canadians so that they can make delicious meals in 30 minutes or less. There's so much stuff. So much stuff. Think carefully, home cooks, but more importantly, think fast. Many Canadians don't have all night to make dinner. Your recipe must follow the chef's plate promise to prepare delicious meals quickly. That means you're going to have to make a magnificent MasterChef quality dish in half the usual time, 30 minutes. Wow. <laughs> At the end of the cook, we'll call up the three most promising dishes for tasting. Are you ready to make the best half hour meal of your lives? Yes, chef! You better hope so, because your time starts now! Go time, come on, come on. I'm making a nicely spiced pork chop with some roasted fingerling potatoes and apple slaw. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of girl. I'm gonna win this today. Cinnamon, coriander. Beautiful. They're gonna to want to think of things that you can do quickly and easily at home. They've got turkey tenderloin that could be roasted off beautifully in the oven. Wonderful vegetables there that could be char grilled, sauteed, roasted. There's such a great variety of options that you can pull together. It's about making it convenient, but still having great flavor food. Gotta have some heat, but not too hot, not today. I'm gonna go veggie. Some people are vegetarian, so it's good for everyone. I don't have any protein, so I don't have to worry about the cook time on that. It's very stressful to cook in 30 minutes. I usually have a lot more time at home. I'm going to make a stuffed pork with quinoa and Brussels sprouts to keep it healthy. I'm going to go for some blackened basa, some quinoa rice salad with a really nice blackened piece of pineapple. This is kind of the stuff that I would eat at home. Pretty healthy, but tons of flavors. Michael G. Chef Michael, tell me what's on the menu. A stuffed pork chop with uh, some apples, some dried figs, and I have some spices in there as well too, a little Parmesan cheese to round it out. How would you feel if people across Canada had the opportunity to try the dish that you invented right here? I would be ecstatic. I think it would be the greatest honor to have people want to try my food and cook my food. This really hits home for me. You know, I'm a student, I don't have a lot of time. Doing mathematics is busy. And you hope you can get all this done in 30 minutes or Definitely. less? Definitely, you know, I'm a wizard with time and I'm gonna teach people to be a wizard with time at home as well. Well, I love the passion, I love the motivation. Hopefully, I love the dish. Thank you very much, Chef. Delicious. I'm making uh, an Asian-inspired pork taco. 
at the fire hall. I'm lucky to get 30 minutes in a row of cooking time without hearing the bell go off. 30 minutes, I'm all over it. It's gonna taste unreal. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, you're halfway there. 15 minutes. Hi there, Nadia. Hi, Chef Michael. What are you creating? I am doing an elevated kofta and sog. In my kofta, I have garam masala, chili, garlic, parsley, onion. I have chopped walnuts. Mm. I'm also going to be doing a very rustic green raita. So you are actually tapping into your Pakistani roots here. Every single person I've ever met who has tried Pakistani food is always converted the second they try it. It smells absolutely delicious. Best of luck. Keep on cooking. Thank you. Ah, how's this going to go on? The judges take one final look before selecting the most promising 30-minute meals for Chef's Plate. The winner of this mystery box will also win a huge advantage in the upcoming Elimination Challenge. The first home cook we'd like to call up tempted us with her sophisticated use of spices. And that home cook is... Nadia. I'm feeling really great. I was hoping that they would see the complexity in my food. I've made for you today a uh, kofta, an elevated sog, a chili potato with a raita, which is a common yogurt sauce eaten with Pakistani cuisine. It looks incredible. What inspired this dish? When I opened the box, instantly I just was taken back to things I grew up with. It's beautiful. It looks amazing. Thank you. It's incredible. The flavors are all very distinct. That cumin, that coriander, and that lemon, they're just singing together. It's a standout dish. Great job. Thank you, chef. The spice seasoning in the kofta is? Uh, garam masala, chili powder, coriander, garlic, shallot, parsley. A lot of times when one speaks of spice, some people cringe because they think heat, fiery, hot, uncomfortable to eat. This is aromatic, warm, subtle, long, rich, just beautiful spices. It has heart. I think you could have been more generous and put three koftas on there because I think a good plate of food is like opening your heart to the world. Nicely done, Nadia. Thank you, Chef. This is a stuffed pork with dried figs, apples, crisp potato, Brussels sprouts, and mixed green salad. I think the plating looks terrific. You've made it look appetizing and appealing. You've added great color. And the pork is cooked beautifully. Just a little rosé color to it, just the way I love it. It's full of flavor. I think the fact that you've stuffed the pork loin just makes it that much more interesting. You've added a sauce that gives us a restaurant quality taste to it. I'd be licking my lips all night long. I think you could have taken that pork loin and pan fry it just on a slightly lower heat. To me, it's got a little bit of drying out on the edges, but small details like that will come with experience. Well done, Michael. Thank you very much. You stuffed it with figs. Is that apple? Yep. It's like a little mosaic. It's marbled. It shows a lot of skill. Thank you very much. There's a lot going on in this plate. You've got the tomatoes here, Brussels sprouts. Some uh, walnuts in there, too. This is amazing. Thank you should be very proud of yourself. 30 minutes, and you pulled this off. Incredible. Thank you very much, Chef. They wanted something that tasted amazing and able to be made by any home cook across Canada. I'm feeling very good about this right now. The home cooks are racing to finish a classic bistro dish, steak frites with Bernays sauce. The person with the weakest dish will be going home. Final two minutes, you should be plating. There's only three components on the plate. They all have to be perfect. Everything has to kind of come together in harmony in order to be a delicious experience. Otherwise, you're gonna have cold frites, hot steak, Bernays sauce, which is thick and gloopy. You don't want that. Three, two, one, heads up! 
time's up. And I'm like, yes, got it all down. It was really close to get those fries down. But I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I have no idea how my steak is cooked on the inside. It could be raw. It could be overcooked. I'm not overly confident right now. I don't know if I've done enough to make it to the top four. I finished everything. My sauce tastes great. My fries are perfect. And I believe my steak's a perfect oh. medium rare. I can't go home. I really can't. It's time to taste your steak frites and find out who will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Please bring your plates to the front. Kayla, we asked for a steak to be cooked perfect, medium rare. What am I going to see when I cut your steak open? Um, nice and crisp on the outside and a beautiful medium rare on the inside. You're confident of that? Never too confident. It certainly is a little darker on the outside than I might expect. Okay. That is a nicely cooked, medium rare steak. Yes. See it quite nicely. It's a little dark in some areas, which would lead me to believe maybe the pan was a little too hot. Yes, Chef. But the cook is perfect, medium rare. The difference of color from the searing from the outside edge to a richer, deeper pink as it moves to the center. Beautiful. Thank you, Chef. It's very, very good. The seasoning is spot on also. Thank you, Chef. I was very concerned that you were putting too much on. Kayla. Hi, Chef. You happy? Um, I'm very happy with my steak and my Bernays. These uh, french fries? Try one. What do you think? I think they're cooked. I think they need more color on the outside, though. I definitely agree with you that it needs a lot more sun, I think. Looking at my fries, all I'm thinking is, where is my purse? I need my bronzer right now. These fries are pasty. I would pay for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's delicious. Much. It's well balanced, great acidity. How did you master a Bernays in one hour? You made it before? Uh, third time's a charm. Uh, this is my, my third time, but I, um, I, I eat a lot of it, so I know what it's supposed to taste like. It took me hundreds of times to master the basic, humble hollandaise sauce, which is the mother of this sauce. And you've done that three times. Thank you, Chef. Had you nailed the fries, you'd probably have one of the best steak frites with Bernays that I've ever had. It's so close. Yes, Chef. So, Eric, what am I going to see when I cut your steak open? Perfect medium rare, Chef. That's pretty confident. Glistening, beautiful, very nice. Thank you, Chef. A nice sear on the steak on the outside and all the way around. See the color differences around the edge as it comes to the center. It is much darker and richer pink. Perfect. Thank you, Chef. Very nicely seasoned. That's about as good as it gets on a steak. Eric, looks very impressive. If that came to me in the restaurant, I would be a happy man. Thank you, Chef. French fries, that's nice. That's consistency. That's uniform. But then we're the crispy expert, right? Yes, yeah, Chef. I can basically almost, you know, hear the crunch. I would give this a very good pass. Thank you, Chef. Maybe a bit more. You know, when this dish is made properly, it has complete harmony. There's nowhere to hide, though, here. I'm talking about fries, steak, and a sauce. What happened here? I don't know, Chef. It's very thick. You couldn't even pour the Bernays sauce out. It's not uh, Bernays sauce, it's Bernays mayonnaise. It would really suck if I just went home and disappointed my family. I hope it tastes better than it looks. Me too, Chef. I am taking the biggest breath. I think I have a good chance to win this challenge. At this point, I'm thinking my sauce could definitely send me home. Mike? Boy, hey, chef. We asked for a steak to be cooked perfect, yeah. medium rare. Is that what I'm going to find when I cut into the steak? I sure hope so, chef. Oh, God. It's blue. 
As soon as Michael cut into that, I'm like, I'm going home for sure. That is not medium rare now. Mike's steak is still moving. It's really tough, but Mike could be going home on a blue steak. Fuck. I just didn't get the sear I needed on it before I got in the oven there. You were the only one that took it to the oven? Uh, yeah. Do you think it was in the oven and out of, uh, out of your mind? No, usually, like, if I get a good sear in a skillet and five minutes in the oven at 325 will usually do it right for me, but I just didn't have the residual heat going into the oven. Nicely seasoned, though. Thank you. Very nicely seasoned. Are you happy with the result? I'm really kicking myself over that steak. I would be, too. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Hello, Chef. French fries? What do you think about them? Uh, there's a bit of a couple uneven cuts there, Chef. It would have been nice if I had a moment to definitely pick out some of the couple larger scragglers got in there. The French fries taste pretty good. Crispy, soft, right consistency, nice size. Chef. How are you? Had better afternoons, for sure. That blue steak, there's no excuse. That cow's still mooing. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's not a perfect medium rare, but it is a perfect rare which is not a bad thing for some people who like rare meat. The Bernays now. Nice consistency. Thank you, Chef. I like the shine to it. It's beautiful. This looks pretty textbook. I made a few Bernays in my time. Well, I like the way it coats the back of the spoon, which is one of the tests for all apprentices when they make a Bernays, and it coats it beautifully. How does it taste? delicious. Thank you, Chef. Everyone worked hard to deliver in this challenge. Unfortunately, we have to send at least one of you home. We need a moment to discuss. There was definitely some high points, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, a few, a few low points there. We got one really bad steak, yep. and one really bad french fry, and one really bad sauce, so... Uh... Everyone had two to three elements perfectly done. Right now, I feel so sick. It's anyone's game at this point. It really is. Bernays is the most difficult yeah. component yeah. on that dish. Yeah. Like, it was like wallpaper paste. Yeah. This yeah. is going to be yeah. very yeah. tricky, guys. So we know what we have to do. This classic bistro dish had three challenging elements. We were looking for a flawless, medium-rare steak, perfect crispy fries, and a velvety Bernays. All of you nailed at least one component of the dish, and one of you nailed most of it. That person was... Kayla. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Your steak and perfect Bernays gave you the edge. Please take off your apron and join the other top four finalists in the gallery. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good job. Mike and Eric, your plates were a little less consistent. Mike, your steak was undercooked. But your fries were decent and your Bernays beautiful. Glossy and perfectly balanced. Eric, your fries were the best of the bunch. Your sauce was the worst and your steak was cooked perfectly to order. While every element of steak frite is important, the steak is the jewel in the crown. And I think you both know what that means. For sure, Sean. Mike, you're going home today because of your steak. Yeah, for sure. Get on, bud. Eric, head upstairs. You're a top four finalist of MasterChef Canada. Congratulations. Thank you, chefs. Feels good to make it this far, but top four still is enough. <laughs>